Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. This time I thought I would do another one of my affordable key comic book uh, vids. Uh, this is volume three. Like I said, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought it'd be cool to show some of these things off. Now, these books, these I tried to keep them under a certain price. I mean, granted, if you have high grade, I mean, some of the ones I'm going to show you, if you have really high grade books like 9.6, 9.8, 9.4, of course they become more expensive. But I just this is for the more moderate collector, the collectors that are not specifically after 9.6, 9.8, 9.4 every single thing. Now some of these, if they're 9.4, 9.6, they're still affordable. But some of the older ones I'm going to show that are probably like Silver Age, uh, most likely not so affordable. All right, so let's get started with this one right here. A next number seven. This is an affordable key. It's, it shouldn't cost you that much. Uh, one of the, you know, the significance of this issue is that it's the first appearance of Hope Van Dyne. Now, if getting Janet Van Dyne, the original Wasp, if getting her first appearance is too expensive, and it is, it's very expensive in low grade, mid grade, high grade. If that's too much for your budget, well, having this one, her daughter, the other Wasp, uh, added to your collection is a more affordable option. It's pretty cool to have, since she is the focus of you know the character, the Wasp in the new movies, just as Scott Lang is over the original Ant Man. Supernatural thrillers featuring the Living Mummy, number five. This is the first appearance of the Living Mummy. For those of you out there that you know, have a mild interest in some horror-ish type titles, but you don't want to go down the EC or the pre-code, the other pre-code horror uh, rabbit hole. This would probably be, a, you know, a, a fairly affordable book to get. Um, I think it's really cool. I, you know, I'm a big uh, horror fan. I like the EC horror books, and I admire the other pre-code horror books from afar because, you know, I don't want to. Like I said a few moments ago, I don't want to go into that rabbit hole because it's it's too much. But yeah, it's true. Those books are very expensive. But if you're sticking with Marvel horror, having the first appearance of the Living Mummy, not so bad. Not so bad. Pretty cool and affordable. Here's another one that's affordable. Shazam number one. Now you know this is uh, when Shazam or Captain Marvel. Went to DC. He's been in D he was owned by DC for a little while before they actually started putting this out, giving him his own uh, series. But here it is, with number one, you know, the reintroduction of Captain Marvel, the original Captain Marvel, Shazam, into the DC universe. It's a fairly affordable book. It's not going to break the bank. Now, if it was a nine eight, it'd probably be several hundred dollars. You know. And that's what I was talking about earlier in the video, that yeah, if these are 9.8s, this is not a 9.8, this is probably like an 8.5 or a 9. But, you know, they're still fairly affordable, even in high grades, so it's worth getting. If getting Wiz Comics number one is too much, you might want to consider Shazam number one. Here's another one. First appearance of Lobo, Omega Men 3, another affordable book. It really, you really shouldn't break the bank with this one. And um, it's pretty cool to have with a pretty unique character from the DC Universe in Lobo. And he makes his debut in this book here. Here's another one that I think is a little underrated. Uh, Marvel Premiere number 10. Now... When it comes to Doctor Strange, I didn't know too much about Doctor Strange, even when I first started collecting. You know, I still don't know too much about him because I was, I was never really a follower of his in the comics or anything like that. But this is an interesting introduction. There's an interesting introduction in this book related to Doctor Strange and Shuma Gorath. This, this right, uh, it's such a bizarre monster. You know, for those of you, you know, we all know that Doctor Strange. It's like 
a lot of psychedelics with him, going into all these other little dimensions and so forth and so on. Well, you have this weird creature he fights called the Shuma Gorath. Now, like I said, I wasn't a big fan of Doctor Strange, so therefore I didn't really know too much about him. I knew who Nightmare was and Dormammu and all those other mainstream characters. But I was introduced to Shuma Gorath with the Marvel vs. Capcom games. That's how I found out about him. I mean, I might have seen him years ago when I first started collecting in trading card form, but just ignored it completely or had forgotten about it. But this is the introduction of this character, and it's a pretty cool book. And it's an affordable book. For those of you that obviously that can't get the first appearance of Doctor Strange, where it introduces Nightmare and... Doctor Strange, Wong, the Ancient One, and all that. But you want something that has some sort of significance. There are many significant Doctor Strange books. You might want to give this one a shot. It's the only Batman book I have for this particular video. Batman 258. The significance of it. It's the first appearance or the first mentioning of Arkham Asylum or the Arkham Hospital. I forget. I haven't read this in a while. But it appears in this issue. It's not that expensive. You know, last time I checked, it really wasn't a big deal. And this is a mid-grade copy. Like I said earlier, if you get like a 9.8 or a 9.4, the price does hike. And uh, for, those, for those of you that, you know, need high-grade copies, it's going to be a little bit more. But for those that are happy with a mid-grade copy or anything in that range, it's pretty affordable. And it's pretty key. Moving on, I got a couple X Men books before we get to some Spider Man books. Here we are X Men 205, the first appearance of Hope Summers. I love this cover, and you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Mr. Sinister. I would love to see him implemented into a new X Men movie somewhere down the line, in a good way, and not in a corny way, but in a good way. I think he is such a great character, uh, you know, with all his. Uh, manipulations and doings behind the scenes. He could really be a long-standing threat in a new X-Men movie series. Well, here we have the introduction of Hope Summers. Really cool book and definitely affordable. Last X-Men book for this video, X-Men number 60. First appearance of Sauron. Here we got a little Silver Age going now. Um, this is a pretty high-grade copy, and even at high-grade, it's not that expensive. Um, pretty cool to have. I like the character. I've always liked Sauron. I mean, some people might find he's kind of corny or whatever, but I've always found him pretty interesting. I think there's a lot that could be done with the character. And he makes his debut in in the reptilian form. He showed up as himself, Carl uh, Carl Lycos in issue fifty nine, which is another affordable book. But you know, a lot of X Men books. Uh, once you get away from X Men number twenty, or you know, around that time, you're sure there's a few along the way. But once you, when it comes to the Silver Age. Uh, before you hit 94. But after like the first 20 issues, the books become very affordable in nice condition too. You don't have to get a, a beater copy for it to be affordable. And definitely this one I think qualifies as that. It's a pretty uh, good book. I like it. I've always liked it. And the introduction of Sauron. I don't know if a lot of people talk about this one that much, but The Amazing Spider-Man 344. Now, the reason why I'm highlighting this one, I know there's other stuff going on in this book. I believe this is the uh, issue where, if you're, if you're a Carnage fan, I believe this is the issue where Eddie Brock, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't gone through this book in a while, and maybe I should have gone through it before making this video, but I believe it's in this issue where Eddie Brock, the costume breaks him out of jail and leaves the Carnage symbiote or symbiote depending on how you pronounce it behind on the bars where you see it going near Cletus Cassidy's hand. I believe that's the sick one of the big things about this book but the reason why I'm highlighting it is because it's the first appearance of Cardiac. You know not a very well-known Spider-Man villain. I see him every now and then. I always thought he looked pretty cool you know with the white and the blue and all of that. I've always enjoyed that and, you know, the energy that he uses. 
But it's an affordable book. It's not something that's going to break the bank. And it's a pretty cool addition to anybody's Spider-Man collection, whether you're looking for uh, minor villains like Cardiac or trying to complete your whole Carnage story. Speaking of Carnage, it's another one that's not. I don't think it's really talked too much about. And eh, Cardiac, here he is again. <laughs> this is the... Uh, when it comes to Carnage, well, this is this is the main reason why I'm even showing this one. It is the cameo of Carnage, first appearance of Carnage. I know 361 is the one that everyone's after, and rightfully so. It's his full appearance. But in this one is where you see Cletus Cassidy again, and the costume is bonded with him, and he pulls an officer, I believe, through the bars, if I'm not mistaken, and escapes, which sets the mood or sets the tone, rather, for 361, 362, and 363. Pretty affordable. Got a couple more Spider-Man books here. So I think, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, the rest of the books I want to show are Spider-Mans. Because yeah, there are a lot of affordable Spider-Man books out there. You don't need to go after all the first big appearances. You can have a nice collection with some of these that are fairly affordable, whether they're first appearances. I tend to focus on first appearances, That's as you can tell. But, you know, some of them are just cool because of the covers and the stories and all that stuff. So here we have – now, I know this one could be jump, – it uh, jumps a little price. It usually goes, what, 50 40 50 dollars something like that uh, amazing spider-man 316 this is the first time you see venom on a cover and what a cover it is by todd mcfarlane look at this you see spider-man's blood dripping off venom's claw I, i've highlighted this book before i believe in uh favorite color uh, favorite covers video in a favorite covers video um pretty cool uh really cool to have and it's uh if Having the first appearance of Venom is a little too much for you. The you know some of those earlier first appearances like the, the 298, the 299, or in the bin the big one, the 300. If those are a little out of your price range, uh, this might be a good option. Cool cover, first cover appearance. Here's one that I don't think uh, gets enough attention. Amazing Spider-Man 113. This is the first appearance of Hammerhead. Uh, the gangster, you know, from the uh, 30s, uh, 40s, Dick Tracy-like character in the Spider-Man universe. He had a minor role in uh, Spider-Man lore early on. I think he was eventually killed and so forth. I don't remember the storyline altogether. But this is his first appearance in one, one, uh, 113. Not a book that I think gets enough uh, attention or love enough love, but here it is. It's affordable. I don't think it's going to cost you too too much. Maybe you know, maybe eight point oh, nine point oh might cost you about thirty forty bucks. Uh, Six point oh might cost you below twenty twenty ish. You know, something like that. So I, and either give or take a few bucks, but either you know, no matter what, it's still a fairly affordable book for a Spider Man villain. Two more. Like I mentioned earlier, if getting some of those earlier Spider-Man villains, their first appearance is way out of your, uh, you know, way out of your funds, out of your budget, I mean, it's understandable. It's, it's not, you know, those things are not cheap. Uh, not for anybody. If you can't get the first lizard, you might want to go for the second lizard. Now, this is a mid-grade copy, maybe a 4.5, 5.0, so mid, uh, low to mid or whatever it is. Um, still pretty cool. This was an upgrade I made over a, wh a while ago. I had a other copy that was an absolute beater that I got back in like 93. But here we have a decent copy. And it's not going to cost you that much. What, maybe 30 30 bucks, 40 bucks? You know, you gotta, sometimes you got to be patient when you buy some of these things. Uh, don't always hit the buy it now button. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky and you get luckier in uh, auctions. Uh, but this is the second appearance and it's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool to have. And the last one for this video, another second appearance. Amazing Spider-Man and a first appearance too. Amazing Spider-Man 51. This is the second appearance of the Kingpin. That's again, it's another Spider-Man villain that uh, whose first appearance might be a little bit out of people's budget, price range, whatever you want to call it. So maybe getting the second one is closer to someone's budget and still pretty cool. I like this cover a lot. This was the first cover I saw when it came to the Kingpin because I had the Marvel Masterpieces cards from 
early 90s, and when they showed the first cover appearance, this was it. Uh, pretty cool. I've always thought of, uh, you know, before I learned more and more about the Kingpin in those early days, I've always thought that the Kingpin was like a uh, like a fat Lex Luthor. That's what I thought they were trying to do before I learned more about the character and learned more about Spider-Man. I thought Mar this was Marvel's answer to Lex Luthor and so forth. It's obviously not. They're two different characters. But still pretty cool. This is the first appearance of Joe Robbie Robertson. Uh, what is he, the managing editor at the Daily Bugle? I forget his title. But I think he's right under uh, JJJ, uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, at the Bugle, a more sympathetic character to Peter Parker and to Spider-Man of the two uh, editors, uh, to those two, two, two big editors uh, at the paper. But that this is his first appearance. So that is it, everybody. This is uh, Affordable Keys Part 3. I'll probably do another one of these. I have a whole bunch more that are similar in price to the ones I'm showing here. I'm not going to, you know, I, I, the first two I showed some books that were I guess you can consider affordable, but you know, when you're showing an Incredible Hulk 180, you know, mid, low, high grade, whatever, it's still pretty expensive. It's still going to cost you several hundred or, you know, well over a thousand dollars for that book. So it may not necessarily be affordable. I wanted to keep things, you know, below the hundred and twenty, hundred dollar range. And uh, I thought this video really showcases a lot of books like that for those that are more budget-minded. So I hope you liked the video, and thank you for watching, and take care.